Uh, in this video today, I will be explaining uh, to you guys how you can make use of the condition tables in a different way. So uh, this is, these are some undiscovered things which people don't realize while creating a condition table for pricing or what are the things that you can do on top of your additional standard settings when you create your condition tables and access sequence. The things I will be explaining it to you, like how you can uh, not have few fields that you've created in the condition table as mandatory, and how can, can you uh, how can you have a field as not relevant for pricing even if it does exist in the condition table? Okay, so I have uh, I hope you can see my screen, and I have just created an example for you guys to explain. Uh, so the condition type. I have, so this is for, for the people who have some understanding of SAP, you've already done SAP pricing and created sales order, etc. So I'm not explaining how you create the condition record and all that. I'm just explaining the different methods of doing it. So as you can see, my condition type is ZPRO and the, the, I have used two examples to explain. I've created two different condition tables using the same fields and how they are different. So let me explain how uh, these two uh, work in a different way and how system behaves. You will find some interesting facts. You may or may not know already about it. Uh, if you don't, then it will be a, a good benefit for you. And if you already know, then it's just a revision for you guys. So here, let me show you. So I've created two tables. One table that I created was 990. Yeah, so it's already there. So let me see, 990. And here, what I've done is I've created uh, these same same fields for 990 and 993, customer, customer group, one, two, and materials. Now, if I click on field attributes, um, I mean, sorry, technical view. So here, what I've done is I've made these uh, customer group one, two, material as non-primary key which means that system will not ask you to enter these details while maintaining the condition record and when you do that system suppose you've made all three as not mandatory system automatically makes this as a text uh, item field so when you go on condition record and select the first combination then system will um, uh, this combination for 990 then system will ask you to enter i'll show you how so if i go here slash OVK11, into this. So the 990 was linked to this one here. And you see the only the customer is mandatory. And the and if you enter a price for this, let's say we enter 30, the unit is KG and uh, unit is GPP. So now you see, I'll save this. Now here, although when you have created condition tables and access sequence, uh, you might not have uh, used uh, this approach where you have a field, but you're not entering the values in it. Okay, so it's it's it, it doesn't make sense that why do you have it? So the reason that uh, we have these additional fields is uh, is because you might need it for reporting purposes, but you don't want a system to determine prices by mandatorily putting these values in it. By reporting, it means that if you enter the value, system will say, okay, against which customer group you have entered the price, but system will not determine the price based on the values that you've entered. Yet. So that's one approach of doing. So let's save it and see if system picks up that price. Okay, so because I already had a price maintained for that, so it's overlapping and it has saved the price was 30 so let's see if i create a sales order for that okay so i've used the same customer this one okay and i will enter a material which we haven't entered in the condition record okay 
Now here, if you see, the price has picked up as 30, even though I did not enter all the values. Okay, now if I click on analysis, and then if you see this uh, value, it has uh, found the price, this one is missing because I haven't entered the first one. And this one, it has found, because e even though it had value, it has found this one, okay? So that's one thing. Now let us uh, so let us go into the other one of the uh, uh, other key combination. Okay, one second. So that's one way of doing it. Now other one uh, that uh, I created was nine nine zero and. Uh, here, let me show you first the condition record. Okay. This one. Now in this one, uh, no, this was the one that I showed uh, to you guys before. Now in this one, the first one here, uh, this is the customer. I've made this customer as mandatory. And uh, in, the, in the condition table, I have made everything as mandatory but still it shows as optional i'll tell you how this is the difference between the first and the second one but let me show you first uh, the condition table of this one uh, it was 993 so 993 here now if i click on uh, you see all the fields are key, but still it was showing as uh, optional. So that's the second way. Uh, I'll explain it to you why it is showing optional, even though you can see this is mandatory. So the second way of doing it is if you go to the access sequence of that, factor sequence uh, that I've created was ZPR1, which is linked to 993 and 990. Here, you can see here in this one, 993 is the one that I was showing you right now. Here, there is an option where you can make the access sequence as not relevant for price determination. So that's the second way of doing it. So now if you enter uh, the price based on this key combination, system will still find the price uh, based on the material and determine it. So let me show you. So let me maintain the price for this key combination okay customer i will not enter anything here i'll just enter material four and then i will enter the material price okay so i will enter these values and let's see what happens because this is on the top of the list system should uh, pick this first so 35 so if i create a sales order So let's pick 35, even though we did not enter the, the value. Okay. So the again, the reason the reason why we have these options is because in some cases, in some business scenarios, you want the values for reporting purposes. Uh, like if you want to track a report of which customer groups have been used, but you don't want that to determine the price. You don't want the customer group to determining the price. So if if a person who's maintaining the price, he entered the price. Without the customer group, system will still pick it up, but it will not show in the report that again which customer group. In some cases, there is no customer group and pricing and all that. So these are some tips and tricks that you can use based on different scenarios in your uh, in your projects. I hope this is useful. Uh, I'll I'll give you some more tips and tricks in my next upcoming videos. Hope you found it. So if you like my videos, do uh, like and subscribe, so I can create more of such videos. Thanks, guys.